Good morning, everybody, and it is really very, very tough to follow those uh, three speakers. I don't think I'll be able to manage it, but I'll try. All right, well, I think if you take um, Dr. Landers' uh, talk and substitute joint for penis, then it'll become like my talk. <laughs> All right, so that's the way. All right, so this is uh, where I lurk most of the time, at Mississippi Stem Cell Treatment Center, which is the hub of the universe. And uh, where the logo is, is where some patients have described the uh, oasis of uh, open-minded uh, uh, things to uh, give you uh, positive options. Okay. And another one described it as paradise. I suppose if you do well, then you will do that. So the question is, does the addition of EPAD, which I'll explain in a minute what it is, to uh, stem cell treatments improve the results in severe orthopedic cases. Now the EPAT stands for Extracorporeal Pulse Activation Technology, uh, otherwise known as Extracorporeal Shock Wave Therapy or, or pressure, pressure Wave Therapy. So let's find out what it is. We all see cases that uh, we regret taking on and uh, those four cases I'm going to talk to you about in fact, fall into that category. So, an overview of uh, the EPAT. It's a technology platform adopted by Stortz uh, Medical. It's based on uh, sets of acoustic pressure waves. Uh, it's a descendant of the lithotripsy machine of 1980 that uh, Dr. Landers already mentioned. And it has become very important in regenerative medicine. Uh, it is non-invasive, it's ev evidence-based. Uh, treatment for acute and chronic musculoskeletal injury and pain. All right, so we use it for other uh, uh, things, uh, especially in Germany or, and uh, uh, Switzerland, but you will, uh, you know, they're listed over there. The way I think about it and describe it to patients is like a sonic boom coming overhead and shattering glass. So we can attenuate that, and of course in nature uh, we, get, we, we know the wrath of that when it hits trees and breaks them and does all that, so it has the power. And here is a quick uh, depiction of what the sinusoidal wave of uh, ultrasound as compared to the shock wave. Okay, the amplitude is much higher, it hits and then it wanes down. So, oops, went too far here, all right. Now, this is a nice slide uh, which shows on the left-hand side the uh, low energy uses which for cell regeneration and, uh, you know, pain therapy. And on the right side, the lithotripsy. It can shatter stones and bone. So, how does it work? Well, EPAT, uh, the system uses acoustic shock waves or pressure waves which provide a mechanical stimulus to cause a biological response in the, treat in the treated tissue which in turn will cause angiogenesis, increase neovascularization, and enhance blood circulation. So basically, it will stimulate and accelerate the healing process. So, um, in addition, the EPAT waves um, stimulate and recruit native uh, stem cells, and other cells too. And it will attract stem cells from that are circulation, uh, circulating around by injury chemotaxis, as we saw earlier in that little movie. So, um, it also releases proteins which decrease in, in inflammation, especially in joint issues like OA. So, all that will further enhance the uh, and induce healing. What happened here? So, that's a, a little picture. So, so, the system consists of uh, the unit which uh, generates the high pressures, the uh, handpiece, which can be switched from uh, D actor to V actor, the V being the vibratory uh, mode, which is like a massage, and a connecting cable between the two. So, um, my indications for using it was, um, you know, the actions and outcomes of uh, stem cells are not predictable in individual patients. And of course, the um, worse the joint is, the less the response, we, we know that. And the jury's out on uh, many issues in regenerative medicine anyway. And um, we are all learning. As long as we do no, no harm, I think we're okay. So um, we at Cell Surgical Network already use the, the actor machine for ED, but most of us who have the machine 
don't, use, don't do enough to justify the cost. So for me, I paid a packet for it, so I want to use it for something else. So, um, simply. So, um, EPAT is used in Germany and Switzerland, as I mentioned earlier, for orthopedics, and it's used quite effectively. And there are books written on it, and I can give you the references. So, the uh, science behind the effects of EPAT on tissues is sound and convincing. So, they say if you see one case, um, if, if, if you say, in my experience, it's one case. If you uh, say, I've seen it again and again, you've seen two cases. And if you say in my series, then it's three cases. Well, in my case, I've gone one more than the basic requirement of a series. All right, so I have four cases. The first patient here in January, I saw her in January, uh, actually I spoke to her on the phone in January, and she uh, told me that she had been told that she needed a hip replacement on the left side. So I said, well, I cannot, I cannot say anything before I see the x-rays. The following week, she turns up on my doorstep saying, uh, here I am, I want uh, stem cells. So we went and did x-rays on her, and the x-ray turned out to be really bad, as you'll see in a minute. So uh, a week later, we put her on the menu uh, to do her um, uh, 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 procedure, and she actually was in a wheelchair. And the x-rays, as I said, were really uh, appalling. So this was the x-ray, you can see the um, the hip uh, joints are completely gone, it's, uh, they're destroyed. And uh, so I went ahead and agonized all weekend, scratching my head what to do. Then I came up with this idea, well, why not use the, um, uh, uh, the actor machine? So uh, I explained it to her on Monday morning and she agreed, so we went ahead with the liposuction. We uh, did the usual thing, while it was brewing, we, uh, you know, I did the ultrasound on her uh, hips. Uh, I do all ultrasound myself and we did the, uh, took the blood for PRP and uh, blasted her hips with the, the actor machine. Um, I found out the settings from one of the books I, I have and I use that and I use it on other patients too. So um, I went ahead and gave her the usual IV, uh, some of vascular fraction, then followed that with um, uh, ultrasound directed injections into the hips, uh, w w uh, both the um, uh, SVF and the PRP. So, uh, first uh, post-operative day, she came in and she was very happy. She slept well and she jumped on the uh, examination table and I offered her a second treatment. That was my first case. I don't know how it would turn out. So, she was very happy and went to Facebook and wrote, just read the first line, nothing short of a miracle. So, uh, that was uh, really amazing. So. The following week, we gave her a second dose. She went back to uh, uh, the Virgin Islands, where she came from, and she wrote, the miracle continues. And uh, so, at the end, she says, love from my paradise to yours. And that's the reason why I called that paradise earlier. So there she is, standing up there, less pain, and that would be eight weeks on, and uh, says, success, my eight-week update, Dr. Bermada, plus stem cell replacement, plus awesome staff equal progress beyond belief. So, uh, the amazing thing continues, uh, uh, week nine, and you can see she's in the swimming pool, and, uh, and, and that's very clear. She says, if anybody tells you you need hip replacement, just run to Ocean Springs. Now, don't all run to Ocean Springs, okay? Uh, I can't, I can't uh, put up with you, all of you. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm on your way here. You want to go say that, okay. All right, so uh, patient number two was, was a rather sort of freak uh, in a way. He was uh, 30 years old and he'd had pain for two or three years in his hips and uh, just uh, over a year before, he actually getting into bed fractured L5 and I, I found that very strange. He wouldn't tell me w w whether he was on his own or not when he got into bed. But uh, anyway, that's uh, where it was. So he ended up having a plate uh, arthrodesing um, L5 to S1 and he was told he needed another surgery. He was crippled, he couldn't uh, uh, elevate his uh, left knee uh, more than 30 degrees, and, but everything else was uh, normal. So, um, uh, we gave him the uh, treatment, and uh, again, while we waited for the, uh, for, for the, uh, for the vascular fraction to come through, um, we went ahead and did the ultrasound and the EPAT, and 
Uh, the, then I injected the entire region back there, guided by the ultrasound uh, machine. Wherever there was tenderness, I just made sure I was not hitting anything major with the ultrasound, and I uh, infiltrated that. He came a week later for his second uh, EPAT dose, and look, he said, you cured me. And he then raised his left knee all the way up to his breast, and uh, he said, see, uh, and I want to get back to work. And I gave him a release to get back to work. He hadn't worked for three years. So the third patient was a rather odd uh, patient. He was in his 50s, and he always came with his mother, uh, who really uh, was very affectionate towards him. Uh, he was crouched forward, and he was clearly in pain. He couldn't raise either uh, knee above 30 degrees, and he had several surgeries on his back, and uh, we went ahead, finally, and did the, uh, look at the x-ray, look at the left side of that, uh, of that spine, all sorts of uh, little growths and uh, really horrible. So we went ahead and treated him um, in the usual way, like I treated the other patients, and uh, he had three very tender areas to the left of the spine, so I injected those, and of course we gave him the uh, uh, IV version, and I brought him back the following week, and he, I couldn't stop him talking about how great he was. Everything was, you know, he was babbling away, and I've got the video here, if uh, we have time, I can show it to you. So, um, uh, he, he was down on opiates, he was not going to pain, pain uh, uh, management anymore, he was really extremely happy and changed his life. And in the video, he actually talked about not only is it, uh, has it affected his back, but his hands and uh, everywhere else. So um, the last patient I have here is a rather, in fact, I'm still in the middle of treating him. I haven't uh, finished, so I don't have the final thing. He is a lawyer. Uh, when he goes to court, he sits in a wheelchair. He can hardly walk. Um, he really is in, in bad, bad, bad shape. He's had. Uh, five, uh, uh, four surgeries already on his right hip, and he was, uh, he's heading for a fifth one. They told him he was probably infected in there, uh, uh, and um, it was, uh, it's unstable, uh, and uh, he, it's no wonder he drinks so much alcohol every day. And I told him that I really didn't want him to drink too much uh, during that, so two weeks on, a uh, couple, well, yesterday, uh, he sent me a message, can I have just one beer? So I said, okay. So anyway, uh, <laughs> so this is uh, his x-ray, and you can see um, you know, on the right side the lytic uh, lesion in the ileum, and uh, look at the shaft, uh, at, at the shaft there of the uh, femur, it's very loose and really uh, horrific there. So uh, what I did, uh, and, and this by the way just uh, underscores what I want to say about the ultrasound machine, I use it for everything. Um, including veins and arteries and everything I, I have in my office. I have three machines and I play with them all the time. So on the right side, on the right side, there is the uh, transverse section um, of the head of the femur, and you can see very clearly where you can put your injection. And on there, you can see a little bit of the neck. So that is a uh, an oblique uh, one over there. So. Um, he, uh, uh, I, I, I gave him one session before the procedure a week before, then we gave him a, a second one, uh, and when we checked on him yesterday, when he asked for the beer, he said he was, he was better, but he was looking forward to coming for his third uh, session. So when I injected uh, in this uh, case, uh, not in the previous ones, I did make sure that I went down the shaft of the um, uh, femur at the top where it's loose. Okay. So the conclusions are, you know, uh, four cases are of course too few to, to, to draw any, any, any definite conclusions, but a t t tentative uh, evidence indicates that uh, a pilot study, this pilot study indicates improved outcomes by using EPAT with uh, stem cell treatment. Both together are better than uh, each uh, alone. And uh, that goes back to what uh, Dr. Landers was saying. Uh, also about the uh, erectile dysfunction. Uh, so um, we, we, we have a problem with, with severe chronic cases, and I think this, is a, a, this makes a good case for using it since uh, the uh, side effects and, and, and problems with it are, are really extremely minimal. Uh, and this is why I use the ultrasound, make sure I don't uh, uh, you know, blast any major uh, big vessels and so on because they uh, in theory at least they can rupture if the wave coincides with systole. 
So anyway, and uh, performing one's own uh, ultrasound, I think, is very, very important in identifying those structures. And this is cells on ice for you. Thank you.